Now, if you've never joined us for a Category 5 Community Coffee Break, you'll find out more about it at Category5.tv. Just scroll down on the home page and you'll see the Community Coffee Break there along with our schedule when we're going to be doing the next one. It is a weekly event that we hold on Zoom and it's an opportunity for our community to come together and even though we're all experiencing what we're experiencing in our world today, um, we've taken the approach to say rather than talking about those things, the things that are bringing us down right now, let's look at it and say look we're all stuck in this situation. What is what is it that I'm doing that's got me excited? What is it that I'm experimenting with technologically that is really interesting to me and helping me to occupy time, whether I'm stuck at home right now or wh whatever the case may be? So the topic came up about GitHub because we're talking about programming and Peter is there almost every time for a community coffee break and Peter was asking, well, how do you use GitHub? Well, not really the, the, something that we can show or talk, you know, walk you through on the coffee break, but it came up that, hey, that would be a really good topic to discuss on Category 5 Technology TV. And the reason that it came up initially is because when Microsoft bought GitHub, they kept it going kind of status quo as it was. And you had to pay for certain features, but then suddenly, very recently, Microsoft said, and all those paid for features, not all of them, but a lot of those paid for features that you used to have to pay for are now free. So they're, they're taking the service and they're basically giving away their premium service absolutely free at github.com. So what's GitHub? Well, GitHub is kind of like a cloud service provider for Git. It's for developers. It helps us to be able to manage our projects so that you can go back in time basically with code. And it really is helpful to be able to see those commits and see how changes have impacted your project. It's also a great storage mechanism for your code because you're able to share it with other people if you want. Now, of course, Microsoft making it free, you can now have free um, private repositories as well. And you can set up as many teams as you want if you want to collaborate with other programmers. But essentially what it does for me is it allows me to share my code online in such a way that other people can use it open source. They can compile it or use it or run it on their own uh, computers. And then if they decide, oh, well, I'd rather it work this way or maybe here's a bug and I can fix that, they can do what's called a pull request. So basically they clone my GitHub repository, my software, code, they fix it on their computer and then they do a pull request which pushes it back, to, well they push it back to their fork and then it creates a pull request for me so that I see that hey Joe Blow over there fixed this bug with my software, I can click a button and it will import that fix into my software. So there's a whole lot to it and it's really, it's very powerful it can be confusing, especially when you get into squashing and merging and, and those kinds of things, which we're not going to get into today. But what I do want to show you is how the very most basic knowledge about how Git works is going to allow you to use GitHub in an effective manner. Think of it as that, where you're putting your code out there as open source software. It doesn't have to be. You can have it private if you want. But in my case, that's what I'm doing. I want people to collaborate with me occasionally. Maybe they'll post issues if they find a bug and then I'm still the person who has to fix it. But at least my community is coming into my software repository and saying, this is a problem and you need to fix it. <laughs> All right, so github.com is where you go. You sign up for your free account. All you have to do is click on the link and click sign up. Now I already have an account, so I'm gonna log in as myself and sign in. So you can see here that if I go to my repositories, so if I jump home here and go to let it load here, let it load. All right, I'm just going to go straight to Cat5 TV is where I host all of my, my uh, software. So go there 
github.com slash cat5tv and you can see how this works. So you can see that I've got a ton of software repositories and they're all different projects, all different things that I've done or that I am continuing to do. And there's pages and pages and pages of it. So once you have your GitHub account, you can log in to what you see here, which is my repositories list. But when you first sign up, you're not going to have all of these. You need to create your first repository. So the way that I'm going to do that, now understand GitHub is not required for Git, okay? And Git is not the same as GitHub. GitHub is an online service. Think of it as cloud storage for Git, okay? Um, it is not the same thing. It is a online storage for that open source package management tool or project management tool. So here on GitHub, they've made it really, really easy to simply say new repository. So I've gone to my repositories and I've clicked on new. And then I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call this one my underscore test and a, a, an optional description. This is a test for the show. Whether you want it to be public or private, and then initialize it with a readme. It's always best to do that. It's, it makes it so that people can access it right away, including yourself. Do you want to add a license? Do you want to add a git ignore? I'm going to leave both of those empty. You'll discover what that means in the future. And create your repository. So now I have one called my underscore test, but there's nothing there. And I'm done with the browser. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up my terminal. And in my terminal, I'm going to type git. Okay, so you can see that I've already installed it. If you do not have Git installed, so I'm on Linux, I'm on Debian Linux here, uh, you can type apt install Git. That's what you're going to type. Uh, I'm not root, sudo su. Logged in as rock. Okay, apt install Git. It's going to tell me that I already have the current, oh, there's an, oh, no, no, I've already got it. There are other updates for me though, but Git is already the newest version. So if you do not have it, you need to install it. If you're on an RPM based system, it will be yum install Git. Um, and you can also find it in your GUI repository manager, um, your um, package manager, or whatever you use, like Syn Synaptic Package Manager, for example. Um, so once you have Git installed, make a folder probably in your home folder, and we'll call this um, repositories just so that I, I have a place where I always know that my code is, right? So this is going to be a local copy of my Git repository. So now I'm going to type git clone, and we're going to copy this URL, github.com slash cat5tv slash my underscore test. So I can copy that just with control C. Uh, you're going to get used to just typing it. It's your username slash your repository. And now, so if I look at my file system, so it's cloned, git clone, and then the name of the, or the URL of the repository. So now if I go to my home folder, and then into repositories, notice it's owned by root because I super user dude to sue. So now there's a folder called my test, and within my test there's a file called readme.md. So within this um, folder. So I'm going to go into my test and I want to create a new file. I'm going to call this uh, nano test.sh and we'll create a quick um, sh file to run a bash script and I'm going to type uh, echo. Hi there. How's that? Oh, I should really stick with the, the norm. Hello world. How's that? Okay. So I've written that out and I've closed it. So now you see there's a file called test.sh. Now when I transfer a file up to GitHub, the, um, the permissions are going to be included with that push. So if I do dot slash test.sh, you notice it says permission denied. I need to make it executable. Uh, executable. chmod plus x test.sh. So now if I type test.sh, it says hello world. So I now have my very first bit of script ready to go up to GitHub. It's part of my repository on my local computer, but it's not yet in GitHub. So if you look at GitHub, I'm going to refresh just to prove it. You see your file list here and there's still just the readme. Okay. So now back in my terminal window, I'm going to again use that git command. I'm going to go git add star. 
within the repositories folder. That's saying find any files that have any changes and add them. Okay, git commit dash am and then in quotes give your commit a name. So I'm going to say my first script and these are just short little descriptions and hit enter and now it's saying hey you need to tell us who you are because you've never ever run git on this computer before. So you need to run these two uh, commands. Pretty straightforward. Git config dash dash global. You only have to do this once, don't worry. User dot email. And if you have trouble typing that, just copy it, okay? Um, and then in quotes, I'm going to put Robbie at category5.tv. And that's just telling it my email address. Then I'm going to go user dot name. Oh. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's actually a really bad storm outside of our studio today. So the lights are flickering a few times, and but uh, I think we're going to get through it anyways. So, all right, delete that and change my name to Robbie Ferguson. Enter. Okay, done. So I only have to do that once. So now, see, next time I run that git commit dash am, it's just adding it. Okay, so I've added it and it sees that one file has changed. There are two insertions and test.sh is new. So it's going to create that. So now the final command that I need to enter is git push origin and I'm going to specify the master which is the branch master. So origin master. And now it's going to ask me for my username and password which I entered when I created my account. So cat5tv is my username and my password I use LastPass and generate new passwords all the time and they are massive and crazy. So I copy the password and then I paste it. And there it goes. It's uploading that data to my repository and it's done. So F5 to refresh. And you should see that test.sh is now part of my GitHub repository for my underscore test. And there it is. And it shows it that it's executable hello world. So now back here, so let's just pretend I've made changes elsewhere. So on another computer and I'm going to do this through the browser just to show you. So on this system I'm going to go um, echo hello again. Okay. And then I'm going to save those changes. I'm not going to give it a, uh, a name or anything like that. Description. I'm just going to confirm. So now the script looks like that. So see how I changed that in the browser as well. You can do this from anywhere. So now if I look at my file locally on my computer in the repository, there we go. It still just says hello world. Okay. So I'm going to go git pull. Again, I'm doing this all within the my underscore test folder. So git pull is going to then look for any changes that have been made elsewhere and pull them down to my computer. So it's always synchronizing those changes. So now if I open nano and open that file, you can see that new hello again is now part of that. So I'm going to show you um, echo hello times three and I'm going to save that and now I'm going to do the exact same thing but I'm going to show you how it's different now that I've already entered my name and my email address. git add star git commit dash am final update git push origin master cat5tv is my username and my password is a string of about 64 characters randomly selected. And I'm going to paste that in and there we go. So that's all there is to now pushing my changes locally to the GitHub server. So that shares it again with everyone else or with my other systems when I do a git pull. So by doing that I can git clone, pardon me, git clone something and it doesn't have to be mine. It can be someone else's GitHub repository as long as it's public. But then I can make changes to it on my local machine and then I can do a push. Now you have to own the repository in order to do a push. So the way to make changes to someone else's repository is to fork it. So when you go to the repository you click on the button called fork and it basically makes a copy of it in your own account that you can make changes to and then that's where you can do pull requests. But those are the basics to get you started. That's going to allow you to 
create repositories, upload your files, upload your code, be able to manipulate it from any system so you can test it on a Raspberry Pi, on your Windows machine, on your Linux desktop, on whatever, and then push all those changes up to the server so that they can be downloaded or pulled to all of your systems. So that's all there is to it.